Hey everybody, I've got a great video for you today because behind me is the new Toyota Highlander with the brand new 2.4 liter turbocharged engine and in this video we're doing a deep dive analysis of the all-wheel drive system and finding out how it compares to the new Honda Pilot. of the new Highlander is a brand new engine. So the old V6 is no longer available, replaced by a four cylinder with turbocharging. This is the new 2.4 liter, made into an eight speed automatic transmission. And then this Highlander also has the dynamic torque vectoring all wheel drive system. And of course, multi-terrain select with off-road modes. Whew. What a mouthful, but what we want to find out is how does this all-wheel drive system perform? So if you're using the Highlander, for example, to commute through deep snow and you need all-wheel drive, how does it work? Well, we're going to find out in a controlled setting in the TFL slip test, and then we're going to take it out here into the Onyx Off-Road Andres pit course to see how that translates to real-world performance. Alrighty, everybody. So this is the TFL slip test. We get various wheels stuck on purpose in these rollers to see how the all-wheel drive system and traction control system respond to help get us unstuck. The first test is the front wheel slip test. So the front wheels are going to be stuck in the rollers. The rear wheels are going to have to engage to push us down. So the procedure is the same for all the tests, reversing into the rollers. This is that new 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, which is pretty exciting. Uh, brand new to the Highlander. We're in neutral, we let the vehicle settle, and then we start the test in normal mode. So this vehicle also has a mud and sand and rock mode, but we like to start the test in normal because that's how most folks are gonna drive the Highlander each and every day. And then if we get really stuck, we'll try um, some of the different drive modes. So in normal, we're nice and settled into drive, off the brake, onto the accelerator. So you can see without much hesitation, rear axle engaged, pulled us down. We'll try it one more time just to make sure it wasn't the fluke. Backing onto the rollers, into neutral, still in normal mode, into drive, settled. Yeah, very impressive. So this all-wheel drive system is engaged and ready to go for your snowy uh, challenges or maybe you've got some sand or mud you have to traverse. Uh, clearly the rear axle is ready to go. Starting out in normal mode, um, no special settings, nothing like that. So we're in the rollers, nice and settled, into drive, onto the accelerator, a little bit of slip, and then the uh, pilot pulled us down. So pretty good result. Um, you know, there was no like clunky engagement. There was not a lot of waiting. We just drove right off. All right, now for the diagonal slip test. So the front left and the rear right are stuck in the rollers. The other two opposite ends of the vehicle are gonna to have to engage to get us unstuck. This is a very common situation in snow and in slush. Think about when you're going up a curb, right? You lift up the left front wheel and then the right rear is planted in the ground, but the other two maybe are a little bit in the air. Uh, same thing on this test. So let's see how the vehicle performed into neutral, into drive. This vehicle is open differential, so the traction control is gonna to have to engage to get us unstuck. Oh, that was quick. Toyota has improved the system. In previous Toyotas I've driven, especially the hybrids, they tend to struggle in some of these diagonal tests, but look, into neutral, even in normal mode, onto the accelerator. Okay, just a little bit of slipping. Traction control engaged is pretty aggressive and we got off. Let's try rock mode. Let's go to the off-road, one of the off-road settings I should say, into the rock and dirt mode, into neutral, into drive, Oh, I am impressed so far. Normal mode, letting off the brake, gently onto the accelerator. Wow, really impressive. Now for this test, both right wheels are completely stuck. The left rear is completely stuck, so the Highlander is gonna have to send wheel speed to that left front if we're gonna get unstuck. So backing on gently into the rollers, getting super settled here, starting out in normal mode, going into drive, now, of course, that left front is a dominant wheel. Oh, vehicle slipping. We can't have the vehicle slip. Okay, well, we got off, but we got basically cockeyed on the rollers and then we slipped off. So we're gonna try that one more time and see if maybe we can have a more fair result. Let's reset the, the rollers here. All right, giving this another go. Three wheel slip test. 
I wasn't feeling much traction control intervention on that one, which is a little disappointing, but we're just in normal mode. Onto the accelerator. Wheels are spinning. They're spinning faster, but we're not getting unstuck. I'm not feeling a lot of wheel speed being sent to that wheel on the ground on the left front. So let me try the, uh, the rock in the dirt mode. Let's see if that helps us at all. Rock and dirt mode engaged. A lot of wheel spinning, but once again, we are not getting that wheel speed transfer. Let me try mud and sand. So lots and lots and lots of wheel spin. That actually feels like even more wheel spin. Let me go into the snow mode. Let's see if that has any impact here. Feels a little better. Uh, once again, we're sliding, but we're not really getting unstuck. Um, snow mode felt like the most aggressive, but especially in rock and dirt, I expected more traction control intervention. All right, front wheel slip test, all three except for the right front on the rollers. I'm gonna start out in normal mode as always. Onto the accelerator. Got a little bit of slipping. <laughs> Even with the front wheel, we were able to get off with almost no difficulty. That was impressive. That was so good. That was This is such a good system. Back into trail mode. We'll see if there's a difference. On the accelerator. You can feel that traction control intervention. Pulled us right off. This is typically the hardest test in normal mode, into drive. On the accelerator. Wheels are spinning. Keeping the vehicle nice and centered, track usual is blinking, but we're not getting unstuck. Let's try an off-road mode, the rock and dirt. Still stuck. Let's try the snow mode, because that seems to do the best. Oh man. Yeah, the, uh, the Highlander just doesn't have what it takes to get off this test, so... Can you push me? Yes. We're gonna have to get a push from the mighty Andre and Alex. Into drive, starting out in normal mode here. Accelerating away. Got some slippage, got some slippage. Wheels are spinning. We're not, oh, we did! We did it! Even in normal mode, we were able to get off I was amazed that that actually worked. Here, let's try it again. I'm gonna reset the rollers and we're gonna try one of the off-road modes, see if that improves it even more. But that was incredible. Just about no other crossover can actually complete that test, especially a front wheel drive based crossover. And uh, the, the pilot did it. Without cheating, without sliding off the rollers, that was impressive. This test is very, very challenging for anything that's not intended to be a hardcore off-roader. And we did it in the normal mode, but let's see what happens if we go into the trail mode. So we have a bunch of modes, sport, normal, econ, snow, trail, sand, and tow. So let's go to the trail mode, the off-road mode. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens here. So we're settled in neutral, putting it into drive, onto the accelerator. Yeah, even better. Any of the three wheel slip tests, the Highlander did not excel in. We did really well on the front wheel slip test, really well on the diagonal, but once we got to three, it was kind of game over. So when a manufacturer puts in these various off-road modes, it's clear that they're trying to make their car more adventury, or at least appear more adventury for some light off-road terrain. Now, of course, this is not a rock crawler. It's still a Highlander. It's not designed to do the Rubicon Trail, but it is designed to go to cool campsites and take your family to the cool trailhead. So that's why we're gonna put it through a trenches course and essentially see how that performance on the rollers translates to actual real world situations. Um, now in the trenches course, various wheels are gonna lift up and we're gonna have to, um, you know, throttle through some tough situations and see how uh, the car performs. Now, what's a little bit of a shame is that Honda builds a trail sport model, which is kind of an off-road focused 
pilot and I wish Toyota would do like a TRD off-road version of the Highlander to compete. Now the thing about the Trail Sport is the all-wheel drive system in the Trail Sport is the same as other um, all-wheel drive pilots. There's a couple different mode changes but the basic IVTM4 system is the same across the board. So that is a really amazing system and um, it's very impressive as to what that system can do. So let's see if at least from an all-wheel drive standpoint, granted this, this, this Highlander doesn't have the clearance of the all-terrain tires or the skid plates of the pilot but does the all-wheel drive system have have what it takes to get us through trenches. So we're going to take it nice and slow. The purpose of this is not to be a test of uh, how fast I can bring this Highlander through the course. It's a test of the all-wheel drive and uh, we'll see how it performs. So we're going to take it slow on purpose, make it a challenge. We're in normal mode right now and then I want to give it another try here in a sec once we go into maybe the rock and dirt mode. But you can see that first um, terrain change. We lifted up some tires but the Highlander performed well. So similar challenge here. Oh, it's doing really pretty well even in normal mode, but it's about to get a lot harder as we start to climb here. It's about to get a little bit steep. Okay, so this is where it's struggling. It's actually starting to cut power. So I'm applying quite a bit of accelerator and the turbo had to kick in and um, help us through. So the low speed really does need to build up those RPMs a little bit. Torque converter's working hard there. Okay, so we did get some slippage, we did get some wheels in the air and spinning, and it definitely did challenge the Highlander. But let's try that same course again in the rock and dirt mode and see if we see a performance difference. This engine's an interesting story because it's got 265 horsepower, so it's down something like 30 horsepower over the old V6, but it's actually up 46 pound-feet of torque and gets the same MPG, something like mid-20s combined. And Toyota says that in the real world, this engine feels a lot more punchy because of that increase in torque and it feels like it's doing pretty good off-road here um, it does you do have to spool up that turbo though before you really get a lot of torque so you gotta be pretty aggressive on the throttle so I'm gonna go to the rock and dirt mode it's gonna be our most aggressive off-road mode and let's see if we feel a difference also gonna take it nice and slow okay so that was better so the traction control actually engaged quicker and helped us along quicker Oh yeah, I'm noticing a much bigger improvement in the rock and dirt mode over the standard setting. It's being much more aggressive with braking the wheels that are spinning, forcing wheel speeds with the wheels on the ground. This is where it gets really hard. We're gonna take this super slow on purpose. You can actually hear the all wheel drive system working. Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. This is a pretty impressive system. Not quite as incredible on the rollers as I was hoping, but in the real world, as you just saw there, that was some pretty decent performance. Okay, trail mode there on the mode selection. First up, the left wheels are gonna dive into the hole, just like that. And now, the right wheels are going to start lifting into the air. We're going to take it nice and slow. The object of this is not to speed through it, it's to make it a challenge for the vehicle. So there we go, we have wheels in the air. Uh, with almost no accelerator, I am just cruising through this. That was impressive. I am barely touching the accelerator. Typically on an average crossover, I am deep in that pedal. Wheels are spinning, we got dirt flying in the Honda. A tiny amount of accelerator, ever so slight, and we're making forward progress. This is where it gets hard, it gets a little steep. Got a little bit more wheel spin, but staying consistent with my throttle position now. We're just gonna crawl it. And we're just driving up this thing. It gets harder at the top because it gets the most steep. Yes! So I'd say that the all-wheel drive system in the Highlander is good for snowy and slushy environments, but if you get a lot of really deep snow, if you need a little bit of off-road capability, I'd probably look elsewhere. For example, the Honda Pilot with the IVTM4 system just is a little bit more effective. It really is an amazing system that Honda's implemented in a three-row crossover. The Toyota, still very well packaged, still going to be a very long-lasting SUV, just doesn't quite have that same capability. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. A huge thank you to Cameron Ninja Cole behind the camera, and we'll see you in the next video.